Hi, welcome. My name is Hilary and this is... I'm Ian. Welcome to Squamish and to the Cloudburst van. We're going to take you on a tour so you can get to see how things work and some details. Okay, welcome. So the first thing I like to do when I get into the van is to create a bit more space. So I like to swivel the chair okay. around. First of all, you move the chair forward. There's one lever and then the other lever yeah. is to bring it round. So we'll do a quick demo. So bring the chair forward, which is this to the left. Then this middle switch swivels it round. And there you go. Perfect. You can put your feet up while your partner cooks and chill. Okay, so now that we have our chair set and ready to go, um, say you have to do some work, hopefully you don't, but if you do, we have a table at the back here. Okay, so pull the table out and then swivel this. Just pull that up and then there's a hole here and that's going to sit on top of that. And so if you're going to do some work at the desk, a really handy tip, grab a box, anyone you like, stick it under your feet and then ergonomically perfect. Okay, so think of this like your overhead bin plane. Now these things don't really know what they're for, but they could be useful. I um, love pegs. So here we have a uh, first aid kit, super important, drinks, coffee, tea, utensils. It's all labeled and there's an empty box at the end. Very important. One does not leave without it. And of course, the last thing we like to keep up here is the privacy shirt. And we love this because we still keep all of this space. So literally opens like that. There's silver side on the windscreen. And then you pull these down, keep them in place, the sun visors. Thank you. And there we go. Super easy. Also one for the passenger seat and the side windows. Goes up just as easy. Okay, super handy. We love our fridge. Um, yeah, super cool. Top shelf, ices things. Oh, there's an ice tray as well. The, the mm. very cold will freeze things, so be careful how cold you have it. And, and here we have garbage bin and recycling at the back. So no need to bring anything. Hopefully everything is here for you. Saucepan. These are sieves, they multi-purpose, super useful sieve, and they pop out into bowls. Also, heat protection for surfaces, super useful. Especially in wood. Second one along, we've got cups, wine glasses, plates, bowls. We do have headlamps. So plenty of cupboard space. Salt, pepper will always be here. We like to keep rice here, oil, tin foil, some basics. And cutlery drawer. One top one with sharp knives, knives and forks. And our favorite little gadget, happy smiley face, is the rice cooker. Um, super easy, takes about 20 minutes to cook, it makes amazing rice. 12 watt. Put a saucepan in there, that one's empty at the bottom. And underneath the sink, we have a little tray to keep your soaps and a dishcloth to wash. Um, love this, super handy. Um, this is fantastic. Obviously this is a bench seat, but what's super handy here, this flips up and comes down for extra counter space. The table, again, pretty straightforward. Just pull it up and there you go. Chopped off from the corner so you can slide in. Now there is a pole which is stored under here to give it that extra strength. And that gets placed and uh, there we go, easy. Okay, so to fold the table down, you just press one either side, push them in. Just like it's necessary to have a first aid kit for emergencies, we do have a porta potty. Um, as you can see, we actually haven't even used it. So, as you've seen, this is an emergency loo, and Hillary and I, if you use it and don't clean it, are going to be fighting over who has to do it. 
and we're going to have to charge you an extra fee on top of your cleaning fee. So please, if you do use it, please clean it and leave it as you found it. Thank you. Okay, today we picked a really nice hot day to be in the van and we're going to need some ventilation. So I'm just going to show you how these work. They're very easy. You pull the, this lever down here and you twist it to open the van. Okay, so that's really important or there'll be no airflow. And then there's three buttons here. This one's on, switches the vent on. One in the end there. You can reverse it to, to blow in or blow out. And we recommend this one near the kitchen be blowing out and you can speed it up or slow it down. Very simple to use. When you're finished, we switch it off. And before you leave, absolutely make sure you shut the fully, push that back and you're ready to go. As you can see, we want this one with the ventilation blowing out. Uh, when you're cooking, it'll take all the smells out. And then we usually have the one in the back blowing in. You get really good circulation, even on hot nights, the air's moving through. You can open the side windows and you get really good uh, cross flow air. I've picked a really nice hot day. As you can see, it's 35 degrees. And the first thing I'm going to show you is how to turn the heating on. This is going to be fun. So very much like your home heating, you see the temperature, that's the temperature inside the van right now, 6.42 PM. You just click, press it and it's off, the heating's off. So we're going to turn the heating on. You just press heat, press the tick button. Now the heating's on. And that's going to set the temperature. We've set it to 15, so it's not going to come on. But if the temperature were to drop to 15, the heating would automatically come on at night. So it's run from your diesel tank in your, in your van. Ideally, you'll have a bit of diesel in there. And we don't re recommend running the heating when you're traveling uh, because it can put air into the heating system. So very important thing is to try and turn this off when you're moving. When you stop and you want the heating on, put it on. The heating's very important for the hot water and the heating should be on for the hot water system. We'll go into that a bit later. But very, very easy to use. I'm gonna turn the heating off now. I'm gonna press again, the heat mode. I'm gonna turn the heating off. That's what I want and the heating is now off. Okay, we're gonna talk about the water system now. A very essential thing. We have a 30 gallon fresh water tank and we turn the gauges on here. So this is this middle button here says gauges. And as you can see, here's our fresh water. We're just at two thirds full. And we have a seven gallon gray water tank. This is three quarters full. Gray water is going to be your enemy that fills up very quickly and you're going to have to keep emptying it. If you forget, you'll just see it overflowing out the side. A little bit yucky, no, no damage will be done. You'll be okay, but try and keep an eye on the gray water and try and conserve as much water as you can. Now we're going to talk about turning the water on. This is your water pump. You may not have heard that, but the water pump will go on. We'll then be able to turn the water on here. You can see you can flow the water. You've got plenty of fresh water here and the gray water tank will slowly fill up. To turn the hot water on, the heating system must be on. So the heating's on here. This switch here is the hot water. And you wait probably a couple of minutes, the hot water will come on and you can shower out the back. We'll show you that a bit later but you'll have plenty of hot water. Okay, we're gonna talk about the lighting now. Very, very simple. These three buttons up the front here. Just click one, two, three, so different zones. You notice if you hold the button, you get brighter or dimmer. And to turn it off, just hold it down. It'll go off. Very, very simple system. Bottom lights here. And at the door there, we have one light to come into the van here and probably one of the most important ones that you'll get a lot of use of the lights outside. So when you've got the awning out, uh, this will turn the lights on outside the van. So those are your main lights in the van. So now the power in the van, uh, it runs off 12 volt power. So you pretty much everything you want on 12 volt. The fridge is on 12 volt. All the fans are on 12 volt. You've got some USBs, 12 volt plugs here. But if you do want to put the 120 volt, the induction stove here works on 120. The satellite dish works on 120. And if you want to use any of these plugs, you have to put 120. So basically you just turn this over, the inverter, and now you can run the 120. So this will now work. You can switch it on. This is running at 900 watts. So it's running fairly medium power. There's nothing on here, so it's giving you an error message, but when the pan's on there, it'll run, we'll turn it off. That's pretty simple.
You can see here how much power you're using. The battery's 99% full here. And you can scroll through this if you really want to be geeky and look at all the voltages. But really, the, this is saying you've got 100 hours left. Uh, but that battery percentage is a key one there. You can see here it's a 99.9% .9 battery. If we're running as we're going now, you just scroll through this. Um, the battery's at 27. You have 106 hours to run the lights, being like they're running now. So plenty of battery. The solar will recharge, and you're fine there. We've talked about turning the inverter on to do 120. The key thing here, if you're plugging in the shore power, we'll show you that a little bit later outside the van, but if you're plugging in, um, there's 30 amp and there's 15 amp. So make sure this in here, if you're plugging at 30 amp, is 30. You can twist this dial down to 15. If you're in 15 at your home or somewhere where it's just a, a simple 15 amp system. This switch here is not in use. It does nothing. So please ignore this. So now we're going to take a look in the garage and see what's in here. As you can see, opens up these flip right back if you need to some space and if we'll go through this bit at a time and you can see what what goodies are in here first of all we'll talk about the power we talked about the shore power when we were inside and you can see this cable here is pretty important this has got two plugs on it this is the 15 amp like you have at home so if you go to a campsite that says 15 amp or this fits in here you're on 15 amp if it's got one of these funny things like your dry home might have and you'll see this from the campsite if you're on this you're on 30 amp so this is Make sure that inside the van, you set the right setting before you plug in. So look at the little plug. The big one's 30, the little one's 15. Pretty easy to remember. I'll show you where these go in. If you're plugging into shore power. Here it is here. You can see this is the one that goes in here. You'll, there's only one way it can go in, so you can't get it wrong. Just tighten that up, and you're all set to go. Okay, so now we're going to talk about this end of the water system. In here, you have anything that's to do with wet. So you have here a, a gray tank hose, which is used to drain your gray tank. We'll do that a little bit later. You'll see what's happening there. We have a shower hose here. Shower is very simple. Open it here. And this goes in. It's a little bayonet fitting. So you just push it in here. Squeeze it in, and you can hear the pump come on. Pump's on inside, and you're all set to go. This is your hot water, this is your cold water here. Before you're having a shower, well, it depends where you are. If you're out in the country, it probably doesn't matter, but most campsites, you probably want to be using these shower curtains. They're pretty simple to use. There's three of them. They're magnetic, and they're all labeled. So basically, this one here is the big one. It'll go the back and there's little magnets in here you can hear them click on there and basically i can have it how high as i want and get in to have my shower here obviously depending where you're at and how private you want to be there's some side curtains and these are marked same thing with private side and they just clip on here when you're showering just be careful because the water is going to go back this way splash back into the van so particularly try and shower this side away from the electrical here we have the Fill hose here, which is very simple. So we're going to fill some fresh water. Only put potable water in here. So anyone can drink or use the water in the van. So what we're going to do, basically put that in there. And it's a 30 gallon tank with a normal hose like this. It will take about 15 minutes to fill from empty, maybe 20 minutes. You can see it on the gauge inside. So we showed you how to fill. As I said earlier, the gray water is going to be a real problem. This is a seven gallon tank. This is 30, so this is going to empty pretty much four times every time you fill. So here you can see it's three quarters full. We've put fresh water in here, and we're going to demonstrate how to empty it. So at the moment it's fresh water, but gray water at a campsite, you should try and get to a proper disposal point. Here, you take the cap off here. It's off quite easily most times. This on, and here's a knife valve here, and you just open it, stand back. And off the gray water goes. As you can see, it's not a lot of water. So you just got to keep an eye on that tank. If it does overfill, it'll just spill out here. So no damage, no danger. What we usually try and do is run a little bit of water through the sink just to put fresh water out here and also to clean this hose so the next people that use it, it's not going to be too smelly. Okay, so in the garage here, you can see there's a slide out. 
you can put bikes on here or whatever you want to take. Uh, here we've got a, a gas fireplace. There's a propane tank inside. This is an option. It takes up a lot of space. So if you want this, you can take it, but it probably means you're not taking bikes or something else. You have to figure out what you want in the garage. So we're going to talk about uh, satellite Starlink. Pretty easy to use. It'll come in an orange case like this, packed nicely. And you have a Starlink app here on this pad that's in with the van. So press on Starlink. The Starlink connection network is called Atwell Van. So we're going to unpack it from the box, but you'll see here, we're going to start to unstow the Starlink and we'll go through those steps. It's packed in tightly. Here you have two cords. Basically you have a router here and you have the Starlink. So we're going to set it up here. Basically the first thing to do is to plug it into power. You have your power cord in here. We've got the AC on inside, the inverters on inside the van. We talked about that earlier. Basically this goes in the bottom here and same with this connector here. We're going to put this in. There's a trick to this. You've got to thread this through here first. And once you're through there, this goes in only one way as well. And there's a little thing to line up here. And you'll see it'll click. Okay, so now you've got it in place. We're going to go to the app and we're going to set it up. One, two, three, four, the pin. And the Starlink app is going to come up here. So this is obstructions. We're not going to go through the details here because you'll get bored, but basically try and park the van in an open area. You can see up here, we're pretty open. This will work well. If you're in the trees, the van's in the trees, you have 75 foot of cord. Just move this to an unobstructed spot and you can test for obstructions. You can do the testing here. And basically we're now going to be connecting to the Starlink Wi-Fi. You can see here, it's now automatically looking for satellites, it'll take about 10 minutes to find. Uh, once it's set, you're ready to use the internet. Very, very easy. Um, if you're finding too much obstructions, you can do a speed test in here. You can move the, this to a better spot, a more open spot, and you'll get a better signal and faster internet. To connect to the internet, well, it's like any other network, it's Atwell Van. The password's Atwell Van, so just connect to it. It'll be ready to go. Really important thing before you go, I always forget to do this, is to stow this. You can't stow it by hand, so please don't try and squidge it back into that box. It won't fit. There's a stow thing on the app here. So basically, we'll, we'll give you detailed instructions to get to that. Put stow. The thing will go back into its position. Take it all apart, and it'll fit back in the box. Thank you.